Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your sixth Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over functions. So if you're familiar with functions in math, this should be very familiar to you. And just in case you're not, a function in math allows you to kind of name a group of operations and then perform those operations on an input value that you give the function. And then the function returns or gives back an output value. So a function of programming does the same thing, just instead of being limited to math operations, it can use any code. So variables, if statements, loops, anything. So let's declare a function to see how they work. So there are two ways to do it, and this is the more traditional way that is similar to most other programming languages. So you write the word function, and then you give the function a name. We'll call it f, and then you write opening and closing parentheses and between these parentheses is where we will put the parameters or input values for the function but this function isn't going to have any so we just leave it empty and then you have your block of code and at the end of the function you write end so the block of code that we're going to run in this function is just going to be a print statement so let's print hello as usual and now if we run this we get nothing. The console doesn't output anything even though we have the line print, so you'd think it would output hello. But this statement just declares the function f. It doesn't actually run the function. We have to call it. So if we were to say f, and then we give it parentheses, and this is where we would fill out the parameters that we declare here. This is where we would give those parameters values to be run in the function, but again this function doesn't have any parameters, so it's left empty. And now if we run it, we get hello. And if we were to run it again, we'd get hello twice. So this is how you run a function. And there is another way to declare functions. And this method of declaring functions shows how functions are considered variables in Lua. So what you, could, what you would say is, we'll call this function g, we'd say g equals function and then instead of giving the function a name here, you just have the parentheses that uh, have the parameter list directly after the function keyword. And then you go down to a new line, you have your block, and then at the end, you have the end statement, just like the other method. And then we'll print just hello again. So calling a function, you that is declared using this syntax is the exact same, so we can have f and then g, and if we run this we get hello and hello again because we're calling both functions, so we're running this line of code when we call the f function and this line of code when we call the g function. So what we've done is we've given this code, these two lines, hello and hello again, a name. We've given them a name that can be use later to call those lines of code and tell them to run. So the fact that functions are considered a variable type in Lua will become very important in the advanced functions tutorial which will come later but for the purposes of this tutorial it doesn't really matter so I would recommend using this style to declare functions because it just looks cleaner and it's more recognizable by people who don't know Lua but do know other programming languages so I'd recommend using this, except in very special cases, which we will get into in the next functions tutorial. So, now let's create a function that uses parameters. So, we'll get rid of this, we'll create something else. We'll create, we'll just call it another print function. We'll recreate print, we'll call it print line, which is what the print function is called in many other programming languages. And the print line function will take one parameter we'll just call it value and then just like before we have end at the end of the function and all this function is going to do is it's going to print value so now if we call print line and let's give it hello then if we run this we get hello if we were to give it say a number if we were to give it 10 we get 10 and we could give it anything else oh, 56 and 
we would get 56. So this function does the exact same thing as the print function. We're just wrapping it, we're wrapping it in another function which does absolutely nothing but reduce the performance speed. So this function is useless, but it is a good way to show how to add parameters to the function. So this function takes one parameter and it's called value. And we, you just write the name of the parameter inside the parentheses. And then within the function, the block of code that the function runs, you can use this value as if it was a variable, which it technically is. So anywhere within this function between the closing parentheses, the closing parentheses, I think that's the singular form of parentheses, between this and the end statement, you can use the parameter anywhere you want. So here we print it, you could also perform operations on it and anything else that you can do with a normal variable. And then down here when we actually run the function, we just give it the value 56 or whatever whatever else you want to be printed out. So this value 56 will be given the name value in the function and then the function can do whatever it wants with it. In this case it just prints it. So you can also have multiple parameters in your function. Let's change the function again. We'll call it add print and we'll take an A value and a B value. So what we're going to do in this function is we're going to print A plus B. So you see here that we have two different parameters and there's it's the same as just having one parameter. You just give the parameters names between the parentheses and separate them with commas. And then the same goes for when you're calling the function. We'll say 5 and 15. You give the parameters values separated by commas. So now if we run this... Oh, one second. I got an error. Oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot to change the name of the function. Call it add print and we get 20. So it took the two parameters that were given as 5 and 15, gave them the names A and B, and then just added them together. So that's how you use multiple parameters in a function, and you can have as many as you want, and you can actually create a function that has a variable number of parameters, so you can call it in one way that lets it have two parameters, call it in another way that lets it have four parameters and call it in another way that lets it have 20. But we'll get to how you do that in the advanced functions tutorial. So the next thing we're going to go over is return values in functions. So let's modify our function a little bit so that instead of printing a plus b it returns a plus b. So what a return statement does, and this is a return statement, what a return statement does is it allows the function to give back a value to the program. So our parameters allow the program to give values to the function and the return statement allows the function to give a value back to the program so to retrieve this value that the function is returning you can pretty much use it anywhere that you could use either a variable or a constant so we'd assign a variable to the return value by saying x equals add just use 5 and 15 again or you could say print add 5 and 15. Uh, you could create a table. Oops, I forgot the second parentheses there. Create a table, t equals add 5 and 15. So you can see that you can use the return value of a function anywhere that you can use a constant like a number or string. And if we run this, we'll get 20 from the console since we're printing the return value here. And this table will have one value in it, and that will be 20. And x will be assigned to 20. So this is just a way to show that returning a value from a function is just giving a value back to the program. Because our add function, in this case, is giving back the value 20 because the program gave it 5 and 15, and then it added them together. So it gave back 20, and then it prints it from the print function. So the last thing we have to go over in this video is scopes of variables. So what the scope of a variable is, is it's where in the program that variable exists. So if we were to create a variable x here and set it to 10, 
this x variable would exist throughout this entire program. It would exist here, it exists here, it would exist here, it exists everywhere. So just to show that, we can print x here, and then we can print x here, and you'll understand why I'm doing it outside of this add function and inside the add function in a few minutes. So if we run this, we get 10, 10, and 20, and that's from printing x here. That's the first 10. The second 10 comes from printing x here, and the 20 comes from printing the add function. So we've created this variable at the top of the program outside of any if statements, loops, or functions, and it's accessible to the entire program. So this variable has what's called global scope, and that means that it's declared what's called globally. So like I said, it's not within the closing parentheses and end line of a function, not between the then and end of an if statement, and not between the do and end of a for loop. Those are all local scopes, which we'll get to next, but this x variable is in the global scope, so it's accessible to the entire program. We can also declare variables in what's called local scope, and this is one of the main ways that Lua differs from most other programming languages. So let's change our x variable so that it's printed out here. So we'll say x equals 10. And since the x variable now won't be created until the add function runs, we need to move this print function down here. That's not a problem with scope. That's just uh, the order in which the code is running because this line won't be executed and x won't be created until this add function runs. So that's why we're moving it down here. It's nothing involving scope. So now this x variable is declared in the local scope of our add function. So in most programming languages, what this means is that this x variable will only exist inside this add function. So we can access x here. So this print x function should still print 10 since x is equal to 10. And we can access the x variable anywhere within this function. So anywhere from this closing parenthesis to the end statement. And then after this function finishes running, x will go out of scope and be deleted. So that's how most programming languages handle it. But if we run the program, we get 10, 20, and 10. And so if we look at what's happening, we're printing the add function. So that means the add function is being run. So we create our x variable in the local scope of the add function. Then we print it out, so that's where the first 10 comes from. And then we return the return value of add and print that out, so that's where the 20 comes from. And then we print out x again in the global scope. And in most programming languages, this would either create an error or just print nil. In Lua's case, it would print nil because x should have gone out of scope, but because of the way Lua handles scope, x hasn't gone out of scope, so it still prints 10. And the reason that x hasn't gone out of scope is that Lua assumes all variables are global unless you explicitly say that they're local. So even though that we declared x within the scope of the add function, the Lua interpreter still considers it global because we haven't specifically said that we want x to be local. And if we want to declare x is local, we just write local in front of it. So now x is local, so it should behave in the way that I just explained. So once this add function finishes running, x should no longer exist, and this print statement should print nil. So if we run it, it runs cor correctly, so it prints 10, because we're printing x here, where x still does exist, because it's still in scope. And then we print the return value of add, which is 20. And then we print x again, and it prints out nil, because x only exists within the scope of add, and add is done running, so x no longer exists, so it prints nil. So there is just one more thing we have to go over with scope, and it's a minor detail that doesn't appear much, but it is very important to know. So there are some situations where you'll have a variable in a higher scope, so a less local scope, and it will have the same name as a variable in a more local scope. So here we have a uh, global x, which is in a higher scope, and that x is set to 30. 
And then we have an x in the lower scope, the scope of the add function, and its value is 10. So the question here is when we print x in this line, this call to the print statement, which x should the interpreter use? Should it use the global x, or should it use this local x? Sorry, my dog just shook its head in the background. Not sure if you could hear that. But anyway, what the interpreter will do is it will take the most local version of that variable that's still in scope, and it will use that one. So we have our global x, and that is less local than our x that is local to the add function. So in this case, the print statement will choose to use the local x rather than the global one. So if we run this, we get 10, 20, 30, because this print statement uses the local x rather than the global one. And then we print out the return value of the add function. And then we print out the global x since the local one has gone out of scope. So we get 10 here, 20 here, we could probably delete this at this point, and 30 here. So that's all we have to go over with scope. And don't worry too much if it's confusing to you. It's a difficult concept to understand, but you'll start to get it more when we use it in practice in later tutorials. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll be going over memory management with tables. And I know that's not the most exciting topic, but it is very important to know. And also, sorry for the long break in videos. School started, and I've been very busy lately, but hopefully I'll be able to start posting videos more again. So see you in the next video.